Hello Spirit, so recently I would taken upon myself to watch the show Carmen San Diego. To get this out of the way, I quite frankly loved it, but something I found that was disappointing to say was its villains. And to put a disclaimer here, that's not to say the villains were bad per se, I just didn't feel like their personalities, motives, actions, driving each character felt appropriate in the setting they were placed in. So without further ado... <laughs> San Diego follows, well, Carmen San Diego, hiding historic items for good. This is to prevent a secret organization called Vile from getting more money or items that can simply melt down or wear. All while Carmen starts to learn of a mysterious past. <laughs> As I mentioned, the issue being was its very weak villains, and for a show that was entirely centered around an ex-villain by the way, fighting against a secret organization of thieves, there was definitely an odd choice for making the villains non-threatening, especially what position and power each had. Now, I don't mind shows with villains that balance out being likeable, cartoony, and showing they're a threat. Some of my favorites are those but they're likeable and threatening because the showrunners give them time to show what they can do. One of my favorites is literally Bill Cipher. He mixes being powerful and being likeable, but this show dances around death. Like, they won't say the word kill, just... What we always do with loose ends. Bruh. So not also that they dance around, but they also dance around the villains being any sort of threat. And for a show that doesn't like saying kill, they also show a torturous interrogation scene which sends Devino into a coma, Carmen almost dying in the same episode, Carmen almost dying in a separate episode, Carmen's dad getting shot, and just much more. So for a show that doesn't want to say kill, they do like to show torture and the ever so rare death. <laughs> As I said before, when talking about these villains, they are a mixed bag of who is comedically bad and who is decently evil. And I don't mean for like each character, each member is one or the other, well, except for one character. And no, I will not be including Shadow Sand since he was never really evil. Remember that one exception? Well, for this bag of mixed comedy and who's terrifyingly evil, goes to one character, Coach Brunt. In the first two episodes, aka The Origin of the Carmen, she was shown to be the tough, protective mother type, alongside in the series saying Vile is a family, which is enough to put her in the comedic bunch, but uh, what brings it back to reality and sets her as the most scariest villain is when she's actually on the field, which is like two or three times in four seasons, unlike the other four characters I'll be talking about, because quite frankly, none are as bone chilling to say the least. Because remember when I mentioned Carmen almost dying? No, 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 the other near death. Yeah, that one. You can thank that frightening scene to Brunt, who almost killed Carmen with a fucking bone crunching hug. Come here, little cub. <sighs> so yeah, she stands on the fine line between jokes and true villainy. Alright, now let's talk about the two comedically bad villains, the one where they're not even intimidating with what they do. So, who are they? Well, it's the Marvel Mall looking ass they call Maelstrom and Cleo from Cleo and Patra in Space. Should I review that? And just to preface this, when I say they're comedically bad, they're not just bad at villainy altogether. How so? Well, they do absolutely nothing. Fucking nothing! These two literally cannot fend for themselves. Could they steal shit by themselves? Probably, but they don't show it on screen. And with Mr. Moore here, he sticks out like a walking corpse. Literally, both of these characters just want fashion. For example, Maelstrom wanted to melt down a coin into cuffs, and Cleo wanted to steal the Queen's crown. It's also that these two do nothing but send out thieves to steal things for them, and it takes a treasure hall for them to get off of their asses. Oh, and they only do this after the henchmen lose the first key. Again, why are these faculty members? <laughs> And for the actual villains, there's these two. And they are nowhere near as dangerous as Coach, but they still have their own skills to cement their places. Uh, you know what, as best I can give them, supporting villains. 
There's Sarah Bellum, who's the mad and fun scientist, and I mark her as dangerous as she can build deadly robot EMPs. She can wipe people's minds and much more. And then there's Roundabout. He's dangerous because he runs British intelligence or he works for him, I don't know. Basically, he's a get out of jail free card. But in some scenes, he genuinely leaves an impression the others don't. But even still, he isn't given the screen time to get to Brunt's level. But he has also done other things. Well, I wouldn't know because he gets the Devino treatment, which is, uh, he gets horse kicked from the screen. <laughs> The villains in San Diego were, well, never really villains. I mean, besides Brant and a little bit of Roundabout. Yeah, these four tore away as a theory, and yeah, they were sometimes on the scene, but we never actually saw them in action. You know, like fighting Carmen? Especially since three out of five of them look like they can handle themselves fine without the other's help, while the other two out of five would struggle. 